I, I hate talking about all this because it's mm. so, so much. And I feel like every time I talk about it, I haven't said everything. And then also pointing out all the misinformation for some reason has the, you know, counter effect of then planting the seeds in people's minds that there is this myth or that there are these horrible things about me or the film out there online. And well, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. Maybe there's mm. something to that. So it's this, I, I think it's a, uh, you know, kind of uh, press warfare where if, if they want to take down a filmmaker or, or smear a film, a great thing to do is to put out all these lies out there where you ha you constantly get them defending the, the truth, but then by looking defensive makes it look right. like they have something to hide there, or, or that they've... There's a term for that. Is that, is that called gaslighting? Is that what that oh, is? Maybe. It might, maybe that's the wrong term, but I, I started hearing about this. Actually, I think it, I, I heard about it in regards to modern day feminism in that, and maybe the Me Too movement, Brett Kavanaugh, all these cases of these guys that were accused, mm. no evidence, you know, this and that, and then getting angry and then everyone essentially mobbing on them to say no you are no no this is what you did no and like for them to essentially have no yeah case of defense I, I yeah I can't remember what the term was but but there's like a term for that yeah um, and, and that 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 is why false accusations are so scary because a false accusation I believe is remembered more by the public than what the actual outcome of that accusation was. So say the person was found innocent, it's actually more remembered that they were accused of something than that they were found innocent. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a really, you know, scary, interesting, fascinating kind of thing because you would think that we already went through this with the Salem witch trials that, hey, you know, maybe we shouldn't just burn people or drown them because they were accused of something. Maybe well, we should actually have a legal system to figure out what really happened. But now with social media, we are back to, and, and I know a lot of feminists think, oh, you know, you're, if anyone says that the Me Too movement is a Salem witch trials, that is, you know, the most misogynistic thing you could say to deflect from, you know, the victims of sexual abuse. No, we, you know, obviously sexual assault is, is a very difficult, you know, crime to convict. Um, especially when so much time has also passed. Uh, but usually it's just a, you know, he said, she said, or, you know, mm -hmm. one person said against another. And, uh, and our legal system, I agree, you know, isn't perfect, but we figured out, okay, what is the best to protect human rights? And we found that you should protect, uh, assume people are innocent until be mm -hmm. being proven guilty. And that may mean that, Guilty people walk free, but to protect the one innocent person from being wrongfully convicted. And I think some women have actually come out and said they would prefer the opposite. Um, I can't remember who it was, but some some celebrity woman tweeted she would rather she she would be okay if during the Me Too movement, like a couple innocent men were yes, I saw um, convicted, you know, w vilified and ousted. If that meant that more guilty men would mm -hmm. also be caught. Yeah. And I mean, that then that just begs the question, and I don't necessarily expect you to have an answer, but okay, well, what, what's the alternative? Because I, I saw that, oh, I've seen this all over the place, but people saying, I, I, Brett Kavanaugh, this is where I saw this happening the most, saying like, well, he's not right. Like the, um, what's it called? Innocent before proven guilty. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, uh, due, pro due, process. due process, due process. Yeah. And they're like, well, due process doesn't matter here because it's a job interview. He's not on court. We're not trying to convict mm -hmm. him. It's just to see if he is right for this high level position. And I thought, well, but the whole, the whole idea of due process, it's not just, it's not just for legal purposes. I think it's also, um, a, it's, it's a philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's a philosophy. And do, is that a philosophy that we want to, um, try for in our everyday lives or not? And if not, then what's a better system? And mm -hmm. I think that's what I've yet to get an answer to. Mm -hmm. What is a better system than saying you need evidence? Yeah. And again, I, I don't expect you to necessarily have an answer, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I think of it as, you know, a, a virtue and principle of, you know, the our founding fathers and, and the, um, you know, our constitution and everything. This is why, people want to come to America is because we have 
uh, these protections for individual rights. And we also have this idea of the American dream. And, you know, that's, oh, there's a lot to unpack there. But, you know, the capitalism and, and the the idea that you can pursue whatever direction you want to go in um, with, you know, hard work and a lot of luck. And uh, But, you know, due process is absolutely a, a, a tenant of our society that I deeply appreciate and value if I were put in that position. The thing is that vastly more men are in the position of having to defend their innocence, um, being wrongfully accused of something. Uh, and, and now with social media, it doesn't even have to go to court for that conversation and kind of public stoning to take place. Right. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.